Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Poloi. And in today's video, we're going to be restoring these G1 vintage transformer jump starters, top spin and twin twist. Now I have had a lifelong love of the figure twin twist. I think it was one of the earliest figures I remember sort of really coveting and wanting to have as a child. I never actually managed to get one, but a friend of mine at the time did have this figure and I always thought it was fantastic. Now it's not the most amazing of transformers because really it doesn't do a great deal of transformation. Here it is in robot mode and with one quick flip like that we have it in vehicle mode so you can see there's not a great deal of transformation that goes on but I just always like the look of it the way that it's this sort of tank with uh, these two uh, twisting uh, sort of prongs sticking out of the front I just thought that looked great and when it's in robot mode I really like the way he looks I just like this sort of the simplistic style of it but the fact it's quite a bulky figure so it took me quite a long time to get one of these I think I only actually got one uh, when I started collecting transformers as an adult and of course if you have twin twist you also have to get top spin which is the other version of him so he's basically the same sort of looking vehicle with the colors flipped around and then when you transform him he turns into a sort of uh, another sort of tank like looking thing but this time with wings on him and these little scoops on the front I just thought they were a great pair of figures even though the actual sort of transformation part of them isn't that amazing <laughs> The heroic Autobots have recruited Jump Starters, Twin Twist, Top Spin, brave recruits in the never-ending battle against... Even Decepticon, Jump Starters, Transform! The Transformers, Robots in Disguise. No other Autobot jumps into action faster than Jump Starters. The Transformers, Robots in Disguise. From Hasbro. But as well as really liking them as figures, I've had a bit of a sort of love-hate relationship with them as well because they never seem to work and they're always broken. Now recently on my channel you'll have seen me taking on another of my sort of Transformers nemesis which is uh, Run Amuck, another of my childhood sort of uh, toys that I really liked. And this one has a very similar sort of mechanism where you uh, pull back the car, it flies along and at some point it jumps up and that's exactly what's supposed to happen with these. But the mechanism on this was also a very sort of tricky one and I was actually able to get these working quite nicely and I restored a few of them. I did this version here to look all original and I did another version with sort of more cartoony style stickers. So I thought I'd do similar on these today. I'm going to take uh, some of these figures and fix them up. A couple I will make look original and a couple I think I'm going to take that sort of cartoony look on them and let's see if we can make them look just a bit more cartoonified. So uh, let's get on with the project. So as you can see I've collected quite a few sort of broken and beaten up versions of both Twin Twist and Top Spin. Uh, and they all have very similar issues. Uh, this uh, twin twist is probably the best of the lot, although he doesn't want to unclick that readily. In fact, it's very hard to get him to uh, sort of turn back into robot mode. I've uh, sort of tried multiple times, and every once in a while he will unclick. But you can see how uh, sort of infuriating it can be if you've got a toy that doesn't want to sort of flip up into uh, robot mode. And that's why a lot of them are broken, because if that happens, a child will then try and pull this apart and you'll end up with one like this, where the uh, hook part that clips it all together has snapped away. So that is something I need to try and fix. I've no idea if it's possible, but we'll certainly have a go. I have a few of these, as you can see, and they're all sort of much the same. I think some of them do, nope, some of them do sort of un unflip a bit more regularly but not often. A lot of them have got very floppy arms uh, and that makes them quite annoying to play with as well because uh, when you're playing with them and sort of rolling it back that arm just tends to flop down get in the way. Oh there you go that one did flip open. Uh, so we're going to try and fix that as well. Stickers are missing on a lot of them so you can see here this one has no stickers and uh, they're all missing their guns. I do only have one gun for a twin twist but you can see the handle has snapped off and this one appears to have a handle snapped and stuck in the, the uh, fist so maybe we can try and salvage that and stick it back on and um, we'll see what we can do with that so that's another area to try and work on generally they're very filthy as I say stickers are missing this one does have an interesting sticker issue if I can get him to open I'll show you that so let me try that one more time There we go, actually did get him open. Uh, in the fact that the rub sign uh, that should be on the feet, all of them tend to have the rub signs on the feet there. You can see there's one there. Uh, you can see the remains of where there should be rub signs there. 
but this one doesn't. The rub sign on this one is actually under this sticker here. You can just about see it. So I'm going to try and salvage that because the stickers on this aren't too bad. Uh, so if I can take this top sticker off without damaging it too much and then remove the rub sign and move it onto his foot, I think that would look a whole lot better. So I want to do that as well. But first thing, I think everything needs a good clean. Normally I would just sort of wash these as they are with a toothbrush, but I think because we've got to do so much work on them anyway, we might as well take every single one apart and then wash each piece individually. And that way we can take the motors out and not have to worry about those getting wet. So the first thing we will do then is take them apart. These are pretty straightforward to take apart as there's uh, four screws on the bottom which would uh, split the body and then you can take the arms off and then the feet are held together with a couple of screws as well, a screw on that side and a screw on that side. So by the time we've undone all of those, I think most of it should come apart. Oh, there are two more screws here at the top and bottom so we can undo those as well. And then everything should uh, sort of be in pieces. You do have to pay attention to the springs that are here on the legs. You need to make sure you remember which way round those goes. That is vitally important. We will also need to carefully remove the mechanism, little wind up mechanism, which I think is just held in with a couple of clips. But we'll see that more once we get inside. So uh, let's take these all apart. I'm going to start with the twin twists. Top spin I think is much the same, maybe has slightly more screws on the bottom. Oh, yeah, you can see there's a couple more screws there. But we do twin twists first, get it all split out, and then it will give us a chance as well to pick the best pieces from each one. So I can make a couple of really nice ones. Some of them are quite damaged, so I probably won't bother fixing all of those. But uh, we'll certainly get a few good ones out of this uh, selection of figures. See there's actually a couple of stickers on the top of here that are going over the joint. So what I'm doing is just putting a tiny amount of lighter fluid on them and that should loosen the glue and I should be able to take the top section off. I just want to remove them from the top part and then we can split this vehicle. If possible I'm trying to save all of these stickers because they are original and they're not in bad condition at all. So I might as well try and save what we can. So you can see there I can just loosen it on the top part. The lighter fluid just uh, dissolves the uh, glue enough or sort of loosens the glue that we can uh, get these pieces apart. Okay so we're into the first one so there's one arm that's the other arm this is the uh, spring-loaded section. You can see that the springs are held in there actually by the main part of the leg. So we'll have to undo the legs to get those out. But this is the main body. We should be able to take these little screws out. The head should pop out. And now we can see the mechanism. That's the little uh, spring-loaded mechanism. There's a tiny spring there. So I'm going to take that off so that we don't lose it if it does come off. Actually, that's held on quite firmly. But there's a tiny spring that sort of forces the mechanism back down. So we we'll take that out. And then I reckon if we just pull this little peg forward slightly, that will release the motor. There we go. And we can pull this motor out like so. Put that to one side. And then there is a tiny little sort of mechanism, which is the sort of hook mechanism. That doesn't seem to need to come out. So I'm going to leave that in place. You probably could take that out, but sometimes if you don't need to, you might as well leave it there. So there's that. Now we can undo the screws on the legs. So we've got one on this side. That should enable me to remove this bar at the bottom which holds the two legs together. And now we can have a look in here and see what is holding this together. So yet there is a screw there. Is this just hooked in? Well, to see if I unhook that spring there, what happens? Oh yeah, I think if we unhook those springs, we might actually be able to sort of pull these legs out of place. Oh yeah, there we go. And then once we've got one leg off, just pull that out. Oh yeah, that, so that spring is actually held into leg. It's quite a clever design, so you don't lose the spring initially. We can then take this bar out. You might need a pair of pliers for that. There we go, take the bar out. And I'm guessing that leg will come out as well. Yeah, there we go. 
and now we have access to the legs which we could take apart but actually in this instance I'm not going to because there are more stickers that go over the join of the two bits of plastic and as I want to save these stickers on this one I don't think I'm going to take that apart I can clean this as it is so I think I will leave that but you can see here that is the sticker I still need to remove so I will remove that before washing but that's the first twin twist taken apart I've now got three more to do So I now am left with a pile of twin twists. I've decided not to actually take this one apart. This one is the most broken. It's got uh, the little mechanism part is missing. It's very yellowed, very worn. So I just don't think I'm going to bother trying to repair this one. What I will be doing with this one is actually taking the screws out of it. Some of the screws that I've removed are incredibly rusty, which I could clean up, but I've got a whole set of very nice screws in this one. So to save time, I'm going to be just using this as a sort of donor figure and uh, taking the best bits of it, which I think will just be those. The uh, actual sort of chromed twists on all of them are in remarkably good condition. I would have expected these to have been a bit more worn. But all of them are really nice and shiny. They just need a bit of a clean. I don't think there's any with any particular sort of chrome wear on them. That one's possibly a bit dull so it may be I even take those off this one. But this one's actually got a bit of a chip on it but you know overall these look really quite nice so I'm amazed at how good everything is looking so that is just a donor one these all need a good clean I'm now going to take apart the uh, top spins that I've got I have three of these uh, only two actually have the mechanisms in I think only two are worth sort of cleaning up so I'm going to take the best two apart and I'll probably just use this one as a part spot as you can see part of his wing is missing anyway but this one does have a mechanism in it and that one doesn't this will be exactly the same process as for twin twist take all the screws out and take them apart they are going to be exactly the same mechanism inside it's just the sort of outer shell that's different so let's get these three dismantled as well and then we can start cleaning Okay, well, we now have what looks like quite a daunting mess of parts, but it actually isn't because they are all roughly the same. These just all need a very good clean. So I'm going to go downstairs to my sink and use a load of hot soapy water and a toothbrush to carefully clean all of these. If they've got good stickers on, then I'm not going to be submerging them. I'll just use a toothbrush to work my way around and try and get as many marks off as I can. If there's little uh, sort of scratches like that or sort of paint rubs, uh, a magic eraser might help remove some of those. The, the legs I definitely don't want to uh, submerge in water because these have springs inside them you can see here and because I've not taken them apart to avoid sort of ruining the stickers again these just need to be washed uh, with a toothbrush and hot soapy water but don't submerge them just try and keep as much dry as you can and I think once all of that is clean we should end up with some reasonable looking parts I'm going to say some will need the stickers removing that are left on there there are some that just have sort of little bits of stickers and lots of sort of guns if the stickers are damaged I will be removing them but if they're not as I say I'm going to leave them as is and then we can come and sort out uh, replacing those I also have a nice little pile of uh, wind up motors here which, which I'm going to sort of carefully clean as well just with a bit of soapy water just to sort of clean the wheels and we will pick the best of these to put back in the vehicles
everything's clean we can start dealing with a couple of the other issues I showed you at the start. The first one being the little uh, sort of handle of the gun stuck in the hand here. To get this out I could just drill it out and sort of destroy the handle but I thought it might be an idea to try and save this handle and see if we can actually stick it back on the gun that I have. So what I'm going to do is drill a very small hole into the centre of that using a pin vise with a very small drill bit in it. I'm then going to screw in a small uh, screw, probably one of the ones that I've taken out of the rest of the toy actually because they're fairly small. Uh, just a little bit if I screw the end of that in I then should be able to get a pair of pliers and pull the rest of uh, the little uh, post out. So let's give this a go. Worst case is it doesn't work and I just have to drill out the uh, remains of it and we'll make a new sort of handle for the gun. But uh, chances are this should work so let's get a small hole drilled into that and we'll see what happens. Okay, so there is a very small hole drilled in. I'm going to get one of the smaller screws that came out of these toys and I'm just going to screw that in a small amount. It doesn't need to be a sort of a huge amount in. Basically all you want to do is grip uh, the bit of plastic a bit, enough that when I pull this with a pair of pliers it's uh, got something to grip on. So let's just screw that in a little bit like that. There we go. Oh, do you know what? It's not actually the handle of the gun. I don't know what that is. It looks like a bit of a, hmm, well, a bit of a silver bead or something. So uh, actually, we don't have the end of the gun. Then it was just a bit of a silver bead, but we've managed to get that out without damaging the arm. Next up on the list of jobs was to try and remove this sticker so that I could uh, save the rub sign underneath. I'd actually like to try and save both stickers if I can. So what we're going to do is just use some lighter fluid and completely soak both stickers in a lighter fluid. Let it soak in a lot. This will sort of uh, weaken the glue that's used to hold both of the stickers on. Uh, and then we can use just the edge of a knife to uh, pull these stickers to one side. And uh, we'll re-glue them as just using some Pritt stick or something like that. Once they sort of start to shift, they actually come off quite easily. But you just have to keep putting lighter fluid on. And they'll slowly come off. Uh, it may be that I can't save this one. It's already a little bit damaged. But I'm hoping that I can get most of it off. Oh yeah, there we go. That's come off quite nicely. So you can see that sticker is a little bit worn, but it's still usable. And then the rub sign underneath, we've still got the remains of the sticker on top of it, so we can just scrape that away with the fingernail. Now it's completely soaked in lighter fluid. That comes off pretty very easily. It's intriguing to me uh, why this sticker was actually put here in the first place. Maybe this is a, you know, just a mistake in the factory. It's odd that it's in a different position to all the other ones I've ever seen. Normally they are stuck here on the top of the foot, so um, yeah, a bit odd. So now what we've got to do is if I just get my knife under the edge of this and then we can put some lighter fluid under there. Again it will do exactly the same process. It will just start to uh, loosen the glue. And if we go very carefully we should be able to remove this and it should be usable again. If it isn't, again, I do actually have replacement ones of these. There's a website called Toy Hacks which is where I've actually bought the uh, replacement stickers for uh, this toy anyway and they sell replacement rub signs but sometimes it's nice to try and save this if you possibly can. There we go. That is that sticker removed. I'm now going to let the lighter fluid evaporate. It takes about sort of five to ten minutes. Once that's all done we can stick these both of these stickers back in place. Now the lighter fluid has had time to evaporate we can stick these stickers back on. I'm going to be using Pritt Stick uh, which is a very sort of uh, gentle glue. It works really quite nicely with paper. It's very easy to work with and on small stickers like this I just use a uh, screwdriver just to get a little bit on the end of the screwdriver and then I can easily apply this to the back of the sticker and um, sort of smear it in place. This is a, ver a very gentle glue and uh, is water based I think so it doesn't uh, actually sort of damage the plastic at all and you can just sort of apply it quite easily. It dries quite quickly as well so I'm just going to make sure I'm putting this up the right way compared to the other one which is that way around. Even though it's a battered sticker, it's an original sticker. I don't think that looks too bad. We'll do the same with the rub sign. So I'll get just a bit of the glue on the end of this screwdriver. I'll smear this over just like that. And then we can stick this in the correct place on the top of the foot. 
we'll just let that glue dry. Now some of these other uh, top spins and twin twists have their stickers in place but you can see they're a little bit sort of frayed and coming away. So again all I'm going to do is I'll go around all of these with this Pritt stick and sort of put the glue onto the ones that have uh, started coming away and then re-stick them down like that. I'll try and save as many of these original stickers as I possibly can. Some are unsavable but I think if they're there and they're still sort of in a reasonable condition we might as well uh, try and keep them as original as possible. At this stage I can start putting uh, this twin twist back together because I think everything is sort of as clean as it's going to be and all the stickers are sort of stuck back on. So it's just a case of reversing the taking apart process. So the first thing I'm going to do is put the motor back in. Now I've gone through all of the little uh, wind up motors that I have for these and this is by far the best one. It's got the most power to it. If I wind it it's got a real kick to it and the wheels look pretty good. They're rolling nice and smoothly. The, the uh, axle is not bent and I can see this little piece of plastic. This is the piece that sort of catches uh, on this little hook here to make it unhook that is all moving very nice it doesn't look like there's any problems with that doesn't look like it's broken at all and it sort of moves around when it, that gear moves so I think that is a working motor so I now need to get this motor back in place and looking at this I actually think we do need to take this uh, little hook piece out so what I've got is a screwdriver here I can just push that into the side there and it pings out. The reason you have to do that is because this motor has a little lip that needs to hook into there and also a little bit that hooks on the under the front. So if I put that in I can then push that in place and it hooks in place and we can now drop this hook piece back in like so. So you do need to remove that just to make it easier to get that piece in place. And you can see here this is the mechanism. So as the motor spins round, if I get it to a spin or move, that little piece of plastic should spin around and it hits this hook and makes it sort of flip up. And that's what unlocks the leg. So uh, if I roll this back properly, let's see if that works. We should see this black lever move backwards as the motor spins. And we do, so it definitely does unhook. So that does work. Now let's put the legs back on. That's the next part we have to do. So we need the front section of Twin Twist and we'll take his left leg and we can push that in. The little uh, this bit of spring there needs to go through the hole on that side. So we just push that in place like so. Then we'll take one of the metal bars that I took out earlier. So this long metal bar, we can push that in there. I think we will need a pair of pliers to do this and get everything sort of lined up because we have then got to put his other leg on. So we take the other leg and sort of manhandle the spring for this one back into place. So we push that on. Now this did come out quite easily so I'm hoping it will go back in just as easily. But sometimes these things are never quite as straightforward as you imagine. Uh, yeah I think this is going to be a little bit more awkward. We're going to have to bend a few things and twist a few things to get everything to work. Ah oh, there we go. That goes in like that. And then we have to move the spring on this left leg. It needs to hook into there so we just have to push this around and like that. And both of those look like they're in the right position. So if we spring these legs forwards, yeah they do spring back so I think that is correct. So let's start putting the rest of him together. The feet need to be joined together and that's what this bar is for. So we have to put that bar across the middle of the two feet make sure it sort of clicks in place and then there's a screw on either side that we need to screw in. Everything else we can do from the back of Twin Twist. So we take the two little screw pieces. Now these have a hole through the middle of them and there is a matching little peg on the bottom part of Twin Twist. So we have to line that hole up with that peg. So those can both go in there. Now we also took a spring off of this mechanism. You can see there's a little peg there. So in my pot here of pieces we have all of the springs and we can put that back on the little peg. 
I think this will need a bit of twisting around just to make sure it sort of locks in place. There we go, that is the spring back on. Now we can put his arms back in place. Now the arms are loose on a couple of these and I've had a look at them to see why they are loose uh, and it's going to be that bits have worn off it. On the arm you can see there are these two little uh, sort of bits of plastic sticking down and on the body there is a corresponding piece of plastic here that is supposed to sort of jam in between of those to hold the arm in place. Now on this one it seems to uh, work quite well but I think when we come to put some of the others together it may not be there. It may Some of this piece may have worn away or some of the bits on the arms may have worn away. So to uh, make those arms stiff we'll wrap some PTFE tape around the joint but on this one it seems to work so I'm just going to put this to back together and we'll try it. You can see I also have some stickers here that need moving out of the way when I come to put this together. Those will need sticking back into place so for now I'm just going to fold those back. We can put his head in place like so and then we'll drop the front of his body over the top make sure everything lines up and the little hook comes through the hole. I'll quickly turn him over, put the screws in the back and then we can give this a test. You can see this arm though is quite loose so maybe I do need to do something with that. Let me add a bit of PTFE tape to that one. This one seems to fit quite nicely. This one though is loose so let's add PTFE tape to this arm see if we can get that one to stay in place because that's going to be annoying if it uh, flips around like that. Okay so I've just tried a different arm and actually this arm doesn't uh, rotate so freely so I'm going to actually put this arm in place. I will deal with this one in a minute but as I've showed before in many videos use this stuff which is plumber's tape, PTFE tape. If you wrap that around loose joints it just adds that extra little bit of grip and will stop the arm rotating. But in this instance this other arm that I have in my pile of arms works much better so I'm going to use that one instead. So again we can uh, put the head back in place, we'll put his body together and then we'll screw this one together. But yeah that arm is a really nice stiff sort of arm there. There's obviously something worn away on this arm so uh, we'll fix that in a minute. But there you go that's not looking too bad so yeah if we'll screw this one together I'll fix the stickers and I'll start putting some of the others together and see if there are any issues with those. Okay so that is the first twin twist back together and he's looking really quite nice. This one is the cleanest one by far. He's missing a couple of stickers just on his shoulders but I'll put replacements on for those. The rest of him, the stickers are a little bit beaten but that doesn't matter. It looks pretty cool but you can see he looks really quite nice. And this one, the motor does seem to work quite well. So it didn't appear to need anything doing to it. I'm guessing it's just sort of old age that stops these things working. Although remembering back to when I had these as a child they didn't work particularly well as well. A friend of mine had one of these and we used to play with it in uh, my kitchen and it never did what it was supposed to do. This one though you can see now locks in place and if I pull it back and let the motor run it does unclip so I think there is potential for this one to work so I'm quite pleased with that. It's probably the first one I've uh, seen that will uh, most likely jump up properly. I'm now going to put the other uh, twin twists together and I'll show any issues I have as I go but I think on the whole this they should just work. The only thing that we've got to deal with is the loose arm. So uh, let's put those together and then we'll move on to uh, top spin. On this twin twist the arms were very loose so this one I have actually used the PTFE tape. So what I've done is I've taken a few lengths of this and wrapped it around the shoulder joints just so that there's enough uh, sort of extra surface there to give it a bit more grip. Now when I put this figure together there will be a little bit more friction on those shoulders so they will stay in place and they won't cause any issues when we try and transform it and roll it along the ground. So I'll put this one together and I'll show you that it's working. So now you can see that this twin twist, uh, once he's back together, those arms actually stay in place. So there's a lot more sort of friction there in the shoulders, which means that uh, you can now sort of actually pose him properly. So a bit of PTFE tape on the shoulders sorts that issue. It's now pretty much the same process to get this uh, top spin back together. So I'm going to do the same process, get everything put in place, screw all the screws back in, and then uh, we'll check that this one works as well. But uh, it's, so far I think it's all going quite smoothly. So that's the motor going back in place. I'll put the little uh, clip back in as well 
and then we can sort of start getting all the legs back on. It's, it's pretty much that everything is exactly the same on this. They may look slightly different, but uh, they all do exactly the same thing. So this is his left leg and we can just push that back in, make sure the spring goes through the hole like so. We'll get one of the metal bars again, push that in place like that. Using a pair of pliers is making this a bit easier, I've found. Now we'll put the other leg on. We'll hook that spring back round, like so. And again, there is a bar that goes across the bottom. As you see, it is pretty much the same process across the two figures. They're just subtly different. There's a sort of bit of a design difference just because of the uh, sort of prongs that stick out the front in vehicle mode. But the basics of everything is exactly the same. Now on this one, I need to check whether the arms are going to be loose. I can't remember if they were. Actually, those feel like they should be quite tight. So we'll assume that they're tight. If they aren't, then I will take uh, him apart again and just put a bit of PTFE tape on. I think that should be fine. We can put his head in. Those bits clip on there. They do need to go in before we put the front of the body on. I'll clip that in place. Oops. His head's pinged out there. Let's push that back in. Make sure everything lines up. Why is that not lining up? Oh, because those aren't in place. There we go, that was good. Yeah, those arms feel quite stiff, so I don't need to put any PTFE tape on those. So I'll just screw this one together and I'll build the other one as well. So as you can see, we're now getting some quite good looking figures. These are the five uh, that I've managed to put together out of that box of seven. And I've got the remains of two others here. These are probably uh, still good for a few spares, but on the whole, they are missing quite a few pieces and have bits snapped off them. So for the moment, I'm not gonna bother with those two. We just have those five in the background. Now we can get on to fixing the broken weapon that I have for Twin Twist before we sort out the stickers. Now I've seen this happen quite a few times with uh, this figure. The gun is snapped off at the uh, handle point where it sort of holds into the figure. There's a small piece of uh, plastic that was obviously supposed to fit in that little hole there and it's not very strong. I guess there's just a little weak spot there so it's very easy for that to be snapped away. So we need to make a new handle for this gun and to do that I'm going to be using this which is just a small piece of Meccano. It's about a four millimeter sort of diameter peg. Uh, I actually just have to file this down a very small amount using a, just an old nail file and that is enough for that to fit quite snugly in the hand there. So this is going to be the basis of the new handle. I'll put the number of this uh, Meccano part at the bottom of the screen so if you want to find your own piece you can go and grab that. I've used these for a few different projects now. It's actually quite a useful piece to have just because of the shape of it. Alternatively you could just find a four millimeter piece of uh, round sort of rod uh, styrene plastic and that would do the job. Uh, I like this though because it is grey and I don't think I'll need to paint it uh, because it will just sort of match close enough. Now to attach this to the gun I'm going to use another piece of plastic and this is a two millimeter piece of styrene rod because what we need to do is drill a two millimeter hole into there, insert a piece of this into it, we'll then drill a two millimeter hole into this and we can push that onto here and it will have some strength. If we just try to glue this on there's not much there to hold it in place so doing it with a sort of bit of reinforcement inside will make it a very strong fix. So let's get some two millimeter holes drilled. Here I have a pin vise with a two millimeter drill bit in it and what I'm going to do is drill some holes into this. So I'll drill a hole in here, I'll chop a small part of this off because we don't need a huge amount. There's not that much that goes into uh, his hand so um, yeah you can see we only need about that much. I'll, I'll cut a piece of that off using some plastic nippers and then we can attach that as well.
So I've now got the three bits I need and I've got to just stick them together and I'm going to be using some EMA plastic weld for this because all of this sort of plastic is ideal for using uh, with plastic weld. It will bond it together just like it would have been originally. So I put a bit of plastic weld in there. I can insert this styrene rod that on. It's a nice tight fit anyway because I've made sure to drill the holes as close to the right size as possible. So we just put a bit more plastic weld around there so that, that soaks in. We'll let that one dry and while we're doing that we can now chop off the end of this styrene rod because I've only drilled quite a sort of shallow hole into the bottom of that so we can just chop off, try that. I can't remember how deep I've uh, done this hole. We'll push that in place and see. Nope, that's actually a little bit too long still. This is just there for some reinforcement, so uh, it doesn't need to go in particularly far. But yeah, that looks good. So what I'm going to do again is I'll open the plastic weld up. And I'll we'll put some on this little peg here. And push that all in place. I don't think I need any more plastic weld because there's quite a lot on there. We'll just let that bond. But you can see that's made quite a nice handle. And as I say, it's not something I actually need to paint because this is going to be hidden inside Twin Twist's hand. I could, you know, put some Molotow Chrome pen on it, but that's liable to wear off over time. So uh, just having a little grey handle like that, I think will look fine. So let's try that on Twin Twist and see what it looks like. Look at that. Really good. You'd hardly know that had been fixed. I think that's a very acceptable job there and Twin Twist is now ready to go and fight the Decepticons again. The final thing to sort out is the stickers. Now for this I have bought some reproduction ones from a Toy Hack so you can see this is a set of reproduction stickers. The stickers are actually pretty good. I've uh, used them quite a few times and they always give a very nice result. So I'm going to use those on a couple of the figures. I've got one here that just needs a few little replacements. So I'll put those on that one and I've got uh, this one that I've removed all of the stickers now because they were just too damaged. So I'm going to put all new stickers on this uh, top spin here. Then I thought it would be quite good fun to to make my own version of these that are more sort of cartoon style. So that's what I've done here. This took a couple of hours of uh, Photoshop work to redraw them all. And I've used the sort of Toy Hex ones as a basis to uh, start my work from. So uh, this file is gonna be available from toyploy.com for free. So if you want to make yours look a little bit more cartoony, then uh, go and download that, print it onto some glossy sticky backed printer paper. Really all I've got to do now is stick all of these stickers onto the figures and make them look really, you know, as good as we possibly can. I do also have some replacement uh, rub signs. Again these came from uh, toyhacks.com so uh, the figures that are missing rub signs which I think is just those three I will be putting the uh, new rub signs on but uh, really it's just a case of getting all the stickers cut out and put on the figures which is going to take quite a while. <laughs> Here they are all finished. As you can see, stickers make a massive difference to how these look. Without the stickers, they're pretty plain looking toys, but as soon as you add all of that detail, it really brings them to life. So I've now got two different versions for each. We've got this one, which is all original. This has all the original stickers as well. Uh, this one, which has uh, some replacement stickers and some original stickers. And then we've got this version of Twin Twist, which has my sort of custom, slightly more cartoony looking stickers. And I think that looks really quite nice. It still brings out all of the detail 
detail and just uh, makes him look a little bit different to the others. I've done exactly the same on the uh, top spin as well. So that one has all replacement stickers from Toy Hack. So he's looking really quite nice. And then this one has my slightly sort of cartoony versions of the stickers. I decided not to put the rub signs on the two cartoony ones just to uh, make them look that little bit different. But the overall effect is really quite nice. So you can see there's a lot of work gone into getting these going and they do work sort of half the time. I've done a few quick tests on my desk here. Now I think my desk probably isn't big enough to get the jump starters working properly. They don't get up to full speed and they don't jump up quite uh, fully. They do jump but they just never land on their feet. I really think that's uh, because my desk isn't quite big enough uh, but uh, you know you get the idea they do all work again. Now there was nothing massively wrong with any of these figures. I think the mechanisms just get a bit tired over the years and it was never particularly that reliable when they first came out. So all I've done here is really a good clean sort of taking them apart and chosen the best bits to put back together but the end result is that I've got a quite a nice sort of little growing army of these jump starters and as I said at the start to Twin Twist is one of my favourite Transformers for some unknown reason because he is pretty rubbish but I've always really liked the way he looks. I'm glad to have at least one in my collection now that just uh, looks good and is really nice and displayable and my little custom version there at the back. If you want to uh, print out the stickers for your own sort of custom versions then do check out toyploy.com. You can download that file for free but if you want the sort of proper reproduction ones then go to the Toy Hacks website where you can buy them for uh, many Transformers. I think they probably cover pretty much all Transformers uh, ever released now. If you've enjoyed this video then make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.